Battlefield 2042 Exodus is nearly here, and until then, we are going to be taking a journey through the eyes of the reporter Kayvon Bashir. If you'd like to catch part four, I've got a link in the description and an annotation on screen. This is part five, Pineapple Express. The date is July 9th, 2042 in Coror, French Guiana. A 44 gallon double wrap garbage bag is capable of holding about 22 kilos. The average weight of a 10,000 SGD note is 1.081 grams, which means the bag the Russians just tossed to the ship from a Syria class submarine is worth over 200 million SGD. Immediately, an old telegraph machine on the command bridge sprang to life. It was OZ. Hank read the message. We will receive five containers. Get them to Kuru. A day later, we conducted another mid-ocean trade, but this time with a Russian cargo ship that craned over the five containers destined for the French Guiana. The manifest claimed they were filled with Senseiko GMO pineapples, shelf stable for up to 24 months. Why did the Russians need no pats to ferry their fruit? First, French Guiana was easily one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Secondly, when those containers landed on the deck, the pineapples inside made a very distinct clang. Three weeks later, we were moving our cargo by rail to French Guiana. I'd never have thought this place would be of interest to the superpowers, but the blackout of 2040 had upended a world already on its head. Everyone thinks about the blackout killing their internet, but the military implications were the real kicker, explains Rao. Having no spy satellites got both superpowers scrambling to get hardware back in the sky. The Americans had just lost Canaveral to the sea, so it didn't take long before people started speculating that they were poking around the old EU launch site in Kuru. The perfect place to launch your illegal space death lasers without anyone the wiser, Rao laughs. Russia must have believed the rumors because they've been encouraging uprisings against the American presence in the French Guiana. Sparking unrest is sort of Russia's speciality, smirks another specialist, Maria Falk. And it doesn't take much to get this place riled up, the former combat medic says, sounding a bit worried about what's to come. We arrive in Kuru a week later for the handoff to a local militia. Armed with Russian weapons, one by one, the containers were opened, revealing pineapples. I couldn't help but laugh until the fruit was removed, unveiling a cache of Volkov multi-munition launchers the Swiss Army knife of Russian rocket launchers. But before anybody could even speak, American forces swarmed the area, guns blazing. A sharp sting pierces my left side. I blacked out. When I came to, I was in the back of a flatbed with Maria, trying to coordinate an exfil. Her bandages wrapped around my abdomen, my first gunshot wound, hopefully my last. I keep hearing Nopats say the world has forced them to do things they never imagined just to survive. Maybe it's what OZ wanted me to see, what he hoped I'd write. But now, doing Russia's dirty work, I wonder if Nopats have lost sight of the cost of survival, or whether I have. Tomorrow, we will be getting part six of the story, so do subscribe and turn the bell on to be notified. In part five, we get to learn a little bit about the map orbital in Kourou, French Guiana, and why there's a rocket and why the importance of us all fighting for that rocket. We also got to see a little bit about Maria Falk, which is a medic that's already been revealed as a specialist. So more than likely, we are going to be seeing a new specialist tomorrow in Antarctica. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.